great day at MedTech day two. Um, I'm standing here in front of the Irish stand, the Med in Ireland stand, who are having a, a nice wee party um, with Guinness and uh, violins, Irish music playing. Um, we've got some great comment here from uh, loads of exhibitors, uh, mainly on medical and plastics. Cross Moffai and Nextall, they're together since since 91. So uh, what now happened is just that we are combining the strengths of both brands into one segment. So in the Cross Moffai group there's a segment injection molding, there's a segment extrusion, and a segment uh, reaction processing. So and within this segment injection molding we will still have and ever have two strong brands. So one brand is the uh, Netsal brand and the other brand is the Krauss Mafai brand. Both brands are very well known for high quality. The, the distinguish is uh, based on the performance. Netstall is has ever been and will be in the future and clearly positioned as the uh, high performance, high quality, very precise injection molding machine, whereas the cross Moffi machine is, is uh, positioned as the high quality all-round machine. So uh, this is how we want to approach the market, bringing in the uh, strengths of both brands uh, together, combining them for the customer, for our customer to, to find the, the right solution for his problem. Yeah. So if you come to me as a customer, I'm not looking at you with the Netstall focus anymore. I'm looking at you with the focus of a uh, machine supplier with the widest, worldwide widest range of machines and technologies. And with that, I can provide you the best solution according to your problem. The best solution in the application way, best solution in the way of energy saving or, or whatever you're facing. You know? Am I just going to explain how the machine works and we do that by following the material, how it runs through the machine. Okay. So first of all, we see the material coming inside here and it goes into the tube. Inside there is a, a screw. The screw is kind of transporting the material to the front and is melting the material as well. As more and more material, more and more melted material gets in front of the screw, the screw goes back and so we have the possibility to press the screw forward and uh, press the melted material into inside the mold. So that's actually what's going on or what is happening here in this area. Yeah. So now we are on the other side of the machine, on the uh, old uh, closing unit side. So you see the mold in the in here you see the, the movable plate going back and forward and when the mold opens the part is going uh, falling out when the mold is closed we are injection uh, injecting the material and we need some certain force to, to withstand the injection pressure so this is what what, the, what we are applying with this uh, lever system here which is a very nice design it's a very simple one and it's a very uh, specialized for medical application because there is no oil leakage we have a very clean environment here and uh, so this is a very special design machine for the medical market where you can clean every surface um, the surfaces are nitrated for example we have everything covered for clean room applications I'm very pleased to be uh, here at, uh, at MedTech again, and we've got a. It's very always pleasing to have something to show, and uh, we're happy that we've got one of our, our mold tools running on the Netstall machine, and for us, it's a very good combination. So, a high production machine with a high production mold, and it, it lets the customer see what we're talking about in reality. Uh, we're showing a 48 cavity needle protector. Uh, it's a pretty typical product for Kiva. We're very strong on IV sets, uh, anything that's with a high risk uh, uh, product. Film, the uh, Philips Medicise plant in Finland, I've heard, is class A for medical device manufacturers, for finished device, especially assembly. Tell me a little bit, give our readers a flavour of the future. Where can you see, how would a device uh, manufacturing and assembly line look in, say, 10, 15, 20 years' time? That's a very interesting uh, question, Sam. Uh, let, me, let me first paint a little bit of a picture of what are we today uh, in our Finnish uh, manufacturing side. 
Um, the site is specialized in high volume, high complex drug delivery devices. So it is already a very high tech site, running at a very high level, um, both from technology, efficiency, complexity. So it is already at a, at a high end, it looks very robotics uh, if you go there. Um, if you if you look beyond that, I think the future we see is there will be more automation. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't say today it's fully automated assembly, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of steps in there where we are collecting data, we are analyzing data manually. Well, you collect the data automatically, but you analyze them uh, manually, and you take decisions manually or by human means. One of the, the future I see is more and more is going to be done by computers, robotics, uh, decision-making processes, inspection, but also um, analyzing the results and taking a decision. And you would say maybe you're doing that already because you're, you have your vision systems, looking at a product and taking a decision, is it good or bad? But the interaction of all the parameters you see on the line, and whether the final product is good or bad, is probably going to be made much more by the machine than by the human being. So you get an integrated quality system instead of inspection afterwards, after the product is finished doing all kinds of tests. One of, one of the things Philips Manning Size has today is a very strong footprint in the US, so in the Americas and in Europe. And it's clear we supply the global players in the medtech, in the diagnostic and the pharmaceutical market. And as the word said, they're global players. Um, we are known for delivering a really good service. And these customers ask us, can you do the same for us in our emerging markets? So one of the key emerging markets is Asia. So an expansion to Asia <coughs> makes very much sense. Uh, so the market is asking for it. It will be Asia for Asia. So we, we will deliver to customers in Asia. It might be European or US based original customers, but it's Asia and Asia. And we're active, actively working on geographical expansion into Asia. So, Christoph, I've been told that some of the uh, emerging markets um, doing business there can sometimes be a little bit taxing while there's strong growth. Um, maybe some of the like, regulatory areas are a little bit open for interpretation. Is this uh, something you've experienced? Yeah, this is a very interesting question, Sam, since um, there was very little activities in greenfield investments in these emerging countries in the past, I would say, 20 years. Um, in the 70s and 80s, um, there was uh, a lot of investment in mainly syringe factories, infusion set uh, factories, but uh, today uh, the equipment is outdated and uh, there is a big need there for, uh, for investment. What kind of things do they ask for? Are they asking for injection molding machines or a bigger kind of picture type? Basically, they, they typically ask for one of factory. They want you to build a factory. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 the typical request, and um, to, to help them uh, is building the factory. We partner with uh, consultants. They need actually when it's very important a either a channel contractor or a an engineer. Uh, coordinates and lay, lays out uh, the entire factory. And uh, so typically we partner with uh, packaging companies, with uh, mold makers, with uh, sterilizing equipment of, uh, companies, with uh, civil work companies um, to put the customer in the position to get a turnkey factory. I wanted to explore a little bit about the relationship between regulation and innovation. Does one thing stifle the other or does regulation stimulate innovation? Could you share some thoughts on that concept for me? Certainly, I you know I think there's there's this uh, idea that we want no regulation out there, and I think that's kind of a, a panacea, and it's a, a false uh, notion that you can go with straight no regulation. So, so if you use that as a basis, there's there's got to be some balance uh, in understanding you know what is necessary. Uh, I think there can be a level of regulation that can stifle innovation. Um, so it's really striking uh, where does
does that level hit? And then it might be different for all industries, um, but especially in the medical realm, you know, there's uh, there's such a uh, a need for quality, a need for assurance, you know, and, I, I, and maybe there's a level of overprotection, and uh, I suppose regulation would fall on the side of uh, be more careful than less careful. But at the same time, you know, that regulation can um, it costs money, and certainly uh, when you're spending in one direction, it, it, it you know it can take away from where you might spend on, on R and D. So it can from that kind of indirect way. Uh, it can from just the, maybe the different uh, applications you might try or go after. Uh, I know uh, in the U.S. many companies um, come to Europe to do their clinical trials uh, because there's less regulation, if you will, um, to a certain degree in some of the areas that allow uh, a U.S. company to maybe get their device approved and moved in the EU market, uh, then go to the United States because there is uh, tends to be a little bit more uh, regulation on that standpoint. One of the main trends that we're hearing from our customers is that they have very high expectations for the products that we're manufacturing. And if you think about it, it's a little bit like a cell phone. There's no one in this world anymore who has a cell phone that's just a phone. You have the capability to have a calculator, to Skype, to you know, send text messages, and the more stuff that that phone can do, the more attractive it is. Well, that's exactly what we're seeing with the medical device manufacturers. They are really wanting us to create products that have multiple capabilities, but at the same time, the products themselves have to become smaller and smaller and smaller. Where we, we have a, uh, a huge product line, but everybody is always looking for something different, whether it be different colors, whether it be different materials, for the products that we already have in the line. Are people asking for DHP free or BPA free? Absolutely, and Cosina's answered the call on that. Uh, we did just recently add a line of COP syringes. Um, it is a clear you know, syringe that has that polycarbonate clear look to it, but doesn't have BPA because it's not made from polycarbonate. That's a cyclic olefin uh, polymer, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, it like is. Glass. Yes. Oh, right. And we also have uh, DEHP-free tubing. We uh, we used to have suction connectors that were made out of a PVC with DEHP, um, and that's all been switched over to uh, a DEHP-free PVC. And what kind of colors are they asking for? Um, everything. Yeah. It's uh, we get purple, different shades. Um, our customers are holding us to special Pantene colors and things like that. So what we'll do for them is we will actually go out and you know do what we call a special. It'll be a non standard catalog item, we'd give them what we call a S or a special part number and we'll have that part manufactured for them in the color that they're, they're looking for. So Martin, there's some, been some recent developments in Carco. Yeah, Carco has formed a new company called Carco Diagnostic Solutions mm -hmm. to commercialize some interesting new um, intellectual property in the area of microfluidics. Um, specifically around uh, developing new formats of devices for testing at the point of care. There is a trend from laboratory testing to testing in the GP surgery uh, at the point of care, so a patient gets a much more rapid result in their complaint. And is there any particular specialist area that you're focusing on? We're looking at a range of, of tests, uh, both qualitative and quantitative, on blood and also on other body samples. Uh, but looking to uh, license our technologies to companies who are interested uh, to develop their own assay on our platforms. And is there any, uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, plastics technology that you're employing? Yep, the technologies are uh, all around microfluidic channels and uh, microscale uh, features in those channels. Uh, also surface properties of the plastics and um, also some very uh, innovative low-cost electronics to give a quantitative result on people's test result. And these are going to be disposable diagnostic devices? They will be fully disposable uh, without the need for a, a separate reading instrument. So this, uh, we feel, is quite groundbreaking um, technology.